Welcome to our demo. So we'll demo our time lock encryption Peter, we're bringing uh, using the DRAN uh, Lego Fontropy network. Uh, that's a um, work of the DRAN team. So together with Patrick mostly. Maybe briefly, time lock encryption is the capability of being able to encrypt something toward the future. So the ID was initially submitted uh, in 1993 on a cypherpunk mailing list, and that um, at the time it was that the only way to achieve that was to rely on trusted third parties such as notaries, you know, to which you would give a um, decryption key seal and they would unseal it when the time has come. Um, since then, the, there has been a lot of research on the topic, but most of the um, solutions were either relying on proof, on proof of work, a bit like Bitcoin and so on, or they needed something such as a trusted third party or a reference clock. And time lock encryption is really interesting because it can help reduce front running, mitigate MEV and so on. It's also possible to encrypt your Bitcoin private key towards the future, let's say in two years, so that if you die, your um, you know, your um, successors would be able to decrypt it in two years if they got the, the encryption. And if you're still alive, you could just transfer the Bitcoin to a new address and it's not lost, you know. Our solution to achieve time lock encryption is to rely on the existing Egofontropy DRAN network as a reference clock. So the DRAN um, network that is being run by the Legofontropy is made of over 20 nodes or roughly 23 nodes currently run by 16 uh, unrelated parties, including big names such as Cloudflare, Ethereum Foundation, and so on. And um, the nice thing is that DRAND is building on top of, yeah, is building a threshold network which we can trust. So here we can see how oh, DRAND beacons are mapping to a given time. So each 30 seconds currently, um, the Lego Fontropy is issuing a new round, and this is you know, perf perfectly deterministic. So we can say in five minutes, there will have been 10 rounds and so on. The security of the whole thing is relying on the BLS signature scheme, uh, which they run uses. And the nice thing with BLS is that it's a pairing based uh, cryptography, uh, crypto system, and that's compatible with identity based encryption. And we use identity-based encryption to basically say, okay, we use the signature, the DRAN signature in the future as the secret key, and we use the message that is going to be signed in the future as the public key. So anybody knows the message, it's the round number, but you to know the secret key, you need to wait until the network um, issues the, the signature for that round. And so we are building on top of that to achieve a time lock encryption. So we already have a Go client, uh, which is working, and a Go library. So the, the CLI tool, I, I think Patrick can demonstrate it now. Um, so yeah, as Yolan alluded to, we've got a, a Go library, uh, a CLI, with which we can encrypt and decrypt things for the future. Uh, some points to note here, it supports multiple networks. You can input the duration. Uh, you can also fiddle a bit with the output uh, format that you would like. Um, so let's first take some plain text message that we'd like to encrypt. So uh, I guess, hello, protocol labs. Yeah, very simply, the default settings here will use the test net for DRAND uh, to encrypt for us. So let's encrypt our file here. Uh, and let's set a time, I suppose, of five seconds. We can decrypt it nice and easily in a moment. And our output file, we're going to put in the crypto data, which I guess I'll show you that's nice and empty, so no one thinks I'm cheating. Um, and let's input our uh, data of text that we had a moment ago. After a brief second, we'll see now in encrypted data here, uh, we have a payload. Uh, we can also uh, turn that into armor, which um, some of you may recognize from some other schemes, such as PGP. If we are then to decrypt that as well with the CLI, it's also possible. Uh, we pass in uh, our encrypted data and we output it somewhere else. So let's say decrypted data here. Uh, we're going to pass in our encrypted data. And hopefully the output of our decrypted data will be uh, exactly as we hoped. Uh, additionally, hot off the press, in fact, finished 
earlier today, uh, we've also worked on a, um, a pure TypeScript implementation of time lock encryption. So now you can do this fully in browser as well. So if we copy the, uh, the ciphertext we got over there, hopefully demo gods willing, uh, we will be able to decrypt that. <laughs> demo gods not willing, it seems. There you go. Uh, however, we can also encrypt and decrypt uh, using, yeah, I need to refresh the cache. Well, that's not. We can also do some encryption decryption this way around. Hopefully, we will be able to decrypt this using time lock. And let's also clear our decrypted data. That's awkward. Unfortunately, the demo gods have not been kind on this day, but uh, <laughs> very shortly, uh, these two libraries will be compatible and uh, you'll be able to encrypt in one and decrypt in the other. That's all I have on the demo side for now. Yeah, and so the TLE tool is also compatible uh, with, uh, you know, it, it's ju just like PGP, so you can use it to pipe data into, uh, it's, comp it's supporting streaming interfaces, so you can pipe data into it, you can pipe it into other uh, commands and so on, so the, the, it should be fairly easy to use. And behind the TLE um, command line tool, there is the TLOC uh, library, which is um, a Go library that you can use in your projects and that allows you to achieve the same functionalities, basically. Um, so the whole thing will be made public next week on the 12th of August for uh, DEF CON, because we have a talk that was accepted there. So uh, by then, the UI uh, should have changed a bit. I can share my screen again. So by then, the, the UI should have changed a bit to look maybe more like that. And uh, the um, library, the JS library and the Go library will both be released. It's currently running on testnet, uh, on the DRUN testnet, but uh, we are planning to launch a new Unchained network for DRUN mainnet, uh, for the legal entropy mainnet in September, mid-September. So starting mid-September, you should be able to use time lock encryption in a way that is secure because the test net is like maybe three, four parties. So it's not super secure as a threshold network. The main net instead is a threshold of 13 over 23 nodes. So it's fairly secure. You need to compromise 13 nodes to be able to decrypt anything earlier, which is quite difficult to achieve in practice normally. That's it.